peace in Ukraine feels a long way away. But negotiations between Russia and Ukraine are ongoing. Я хочу, щоб мене зараз почули всі, почули особливо в Москві. Настав час зустрічатись, час говорити. The talks are continuing. It's a process that is not stopping, but at the moment it has no relationship to what's going on the front line. So what would it take for both sides to lay down their weapons? We've been discussing how much to make of all this talk about peace talks. You know, are they serious? Is President Putin serious? Do we have the contours of what a peace deal might look like? Uh, and I guess I'm going to start with you, Ed, um, because what do you make of all this chatter? Um, do you think the sort of the outlines of a peace deal when the time is right are becoming clear or is it all really premature? Well, I think, Sally, there are, there are uh, I think about what a peace deal involves, I think there are kind of three sets of things. The first thing is the status, the peace status of Ukraine. The second um, is the sequencing of the lifting of sanctions. Um, and the third, and I think the trickiest, is what happens to the land that Russia has taken. There's that whole um, area of land in the south of Ukraine by the Sea of Azov, which joins Crimea to Russia across the land. And that is extraordinarily valuable land for Russia, uh, but it's also very important for Ukraine's access to the sea and Ukraine exports large amounts of agricultural goods. Um, and so if you, th if you think of those three things needed to get a peace deal, actually, if you take the totality, we haven't got very far down that path. One has to look at who's doing the negotiating here. And I think the Ukrainian side has got real authority to negotiate. But the Russian side, well, you know, it, uh, Russia's foreign minister, uh, Lavrov, only knew about the invasion the night before the invasion happened. He really hasn't, and the people under him, really haven't got the authority to negotiate. There'll be one person who decides uh, when peace is to be done, and, and that's Vladimir Putin. So, Shashank, let's just pick up on a couple of those. So, one in terms of the status of Ukraine. So, if NATO membership is out of the question, Zelensky has accepted that too. What are the models we should be thinking about for a security guarantee that would make a kind of neutrality agreement work? That's what point one. And point two, um, what do you think is likely, given where the two sides are militarily, in terms of Ukraine's willingness to allow Russia to keep any of that territory, whether it's give up claims on Crimea or will the Russians demand more than that? Uh, Zani, I, I can't really, and I've been thinking about this, I can't think of any post-war modern example of a country which has freely accepted such onerous terms of the sort the Kremlin is demanding. That is not just neutrality, but also uh, demilitarization, uh, stringent constraints on the size and nature of the armed forces, limitations on security blocks. I think the most important question is going to be how sizable an armed force will Ukraine retain and how much Western support in the form that it's been getting in the last several weeks will it continue to have? That's the Finnish model of armed neutrality, making itself indigestible. And I think that's probably one of the most important routes for, 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 for Ukraine to follow. You asked a question also about Ukraine's willingness to give up territory that it loses in this campaign. And I think, you know, in the last couple of days, we've seen Ukrainian negotiators say they will not accept any loss of pre-war territory and they won't recognize any Russian sovereignty over pre-1991 territory. So in other words, they won't even recognize Russian sovereignty over Crimea, which was lost in 2014 when it was annexed. And I think what's happened in the last month or so since we have been having these webinars is the Ukrainians feel they are winning they feel suddenly that they, they can actually outlast Russia here. And that, I think, is going to make them very resistant to making any sorts of territorial concessions unless the course of the conflict on the ground changes fundamentally as well. So that means that even those elements which we read about as being the sort of con component elements of any any ceasefire stroke peace agreement seem to be much, much harder than, than they appear at first sight. And then, of course, Arkady, there's the, the Russian perspective on this. And, and Vladimir Putin, I think we all now agree, can't win in the sense that he thought he was going to win. 
very you know quickly one going in very quickly and taking ukraine but he also surely can't afford to completely lose he can't afford to be humiliated domestically so what will it take before he is willing to countenance coming to some agreement and what are the sort of what has to be in that agreement for him to be able to claim victory domestically that's a very good question zani uh to answer it can we just make a step back uh and look at the objectives of this special operation. Uh, Russia, of course, was not threatened by Ukraine. It didn't, wasn't really concerned with security of Russia uh, from a threat from Ukraine. Uh, Russia is a nuclear power. It was not really concerned about the threat, military threat from the West. Uh, I think a lot of the drivers of this war, of this war, uh, were uh, internal and domestic. They had to do with Putin's. Uh, weakening legitimacy, his need to stay in power, uh, his delusion of uh, grandeur and historic stature, his legacy. That's what led him into this war, uh, in, into this blunder. Uh, in some ways, <clears throat> ending this war for him would be very easy because uh, one of the key objectives that he set out, denazification and demilitarization uh, of Ukraine. Well, demilitarization sort of has been partly achieved uh, purely through the damage that he has uh, inflicted on the Ukrainian forces. As for denazification, nothing is easier than to achieve that because Nazis never existed in Ukraine. So he could stop that absolutely any moment. He is consolidating power. He is turning, as we said, Russia into totalitarian society. He is cutting it from the West. He could actually sell pretty much anything at home. Uh, the problem is that he got himself into a war uh, where he is not the only one who decides. We, we um, have often worked ourselves into this sort of state of mind because of the uh, pure violence this man is, is ready to unleash, that you know, we get sort of, not now, but in the past, almost sort of paralyzed, thinking if he's doing this, he will succeed. Let's just remember that not everything he wants, he gets. Uh, not in everything he starts, he succeeds. Putin has never believed, and that has been the biggest weakness, single biggest weakness, of his regime and the um, terrible thing that he done in Russia is he doesn't believe in the will and agency of the people. He plans things in his mind. He thinks once he's planned them, they will um, go according to plan. As he keeps repeating, they're going according to plan. The idea, and but a war is not a parade. A war is not a rally that he can stage inside Moscow uh, with, uh, with flag waving. And the Ukrainians do show they have agencies and in a way the fate of Russia and and therefore, the fate of Europe is actually being decided today by Ukrainians on the battlefield. After last week's webinar, I asked you for some uh, advice on books to read about Putin. And you said the absolute best possible book that you can read is Putin in his own words. It's called Putin's Own Words, um, which I re really recommend to anybody who is watching this. Um, it, it's a book that was written on the basis of hours and hours of interviews with Putin when he, in, in, when he first uh, came to power. And in it, there is the story of the rat, um, uh, which is a very telling story, I think, of Putin and, and how he sees the world. He would, apparently, when he was a child in Leningrad, as it was then called, he, he, one of the things he and his friends would do would be to chase rats in the, in the stair block of his uh, communal apartment block. And one day he chased a very large rat into a corner and that cornered rat flew at his throat and chased him. And he said, I learned one of the most important life lessons at that moment. But Arkady, you know, is, is Putin like the cornered rat now? I don't think he does yet feel as a, as a cornered rat. There is another very important uh, bit in that book, uh, which directly relates to what we've been talking about. And the story which he tells is that of uh, his KGB file and why uh, he was not promoted uh, higher up within the ranks of the KGB. He actually was a very low-ranking serving officer uh, in the GDR. And the two things that were entered on his file by people who interview, examine these people, you know, psychologically assess them, are two traits that stop him rising. Is one was his recklessness, and the second was the lack of empathy. He believed, uh, I'm pretty convinced of that, that the nuclear threat, the threat of him uh, putting Russian nuclear arsenal on high alert, uh, him threatening, entertaining the thought of using tactical military weapon, will have the West back off. And that will be his most important card, that he could not lose at any point because he can always say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, to use uh, uh, 
uh, my nuclear card. If we're right in thinking this is what he's counted on, that he will pull out the card and the West will back off, uh, how does that change dynamic on the battlefield? I don't think he will use that uh, easily, uh, not least because his own entourage uh, might have signed up for kleptocracy, might have signed up even, you know, doesn't have really much choice but to continue to back him. But to do this, to not just themselves to go to the hate, but uh, have their children and grandchildren potentially die, I don't think they have much appetite for that. Thank you for watching. For all our coverage on the war in Ukraine, please click on the link and don't forget to subscribe.